In a stately ceremony in Washington Cathedral, high dignitaries of the Protestant Episcopal Church gather to see the Right Reverend Henry Knox Sherrill installed as presiding bishop. Bishop Sherrill succeeds the Right Reverend Henry St. George Tucker, who is retiring. Bishop Sherrill's family witnessed the elaborate ritual, which brings a throng of important clerical and lay delegates from all parts of the United States. The new presiding bishop will have his seat in the great cathedral, which now for the first time provides the church with an ecclesiastical home. Standing in the center of the chancel, Bishop Sherrill takes the oath. I, Henry Knox, by divine providence, presiding bishop of the Protestant Episcopal Church in the United States of America, duly elected and now to be installed, do solemnly swear that I will observe and to the utmost of my power, fulfill the duties, statutes, and customs of the office of presiding bishop, not contrary to divine law. So help me God and the contents of this book. At the end of the ceremonies, Bishop Sherrill blesses the audience and the induction ends. It brings to high office in the Protestant Episcopal Church a valiant enemy of the forces of evil. Officially opening the nationwide March of Dimes campaign in Washington, Mrs. Truman and her daughter Margaret take part in the ceremonies at the Capitol by dropping theirs and the President's dimes in the Missouri bottle. Ms. Truman later made an appeal for contributions to the Infantile Paralysis Fund Drive to replace seven and one half million dollars spent during the severe 1946 epidemics. And in New York, little Nancy Drury with the big cop was once a polio victim, but now she's the pin-up girl for the current campaign seeking to raise 25 million dollars. Little Miss Drury of Louisville, Kentucky and her six foot eight escort see the top. At Radio City, thousands watch the ceremony, where they see 49 war hero homing pigeons, which symbolize the 48 states and the District of Columbia taking part in the drive. The keys to the city from Mayor O'Dwyer go to Nancy. Give to the March of Dimes. Seized in a hideaway in the Chicago suburb of Skokie, Illinois, confiscated pinball machines finally take the rap. They dished it out plenty, but they can't take it. One-armed bandits take a beating. It's all part of a $40,000 jackpot hit by the state's attorney, which caused the indictment of six local officials. The funeral pyre is all set, but where are the mourners? And here are the fireworks. Well, guess the boys will have to go back to Penny Ante. In the nation's capital, railroad officials, screenwriters, and critics accompany Miss Anne Blythe of Hollywood as she goes aboard the George Washington for the first motion picture premiere on rails. The specially equipped Chesapeake and Ohio twin unit diner serves two useful purposes. Eating is one of them, and then when the dishes have been cleared away and the shades drawn, the car is readily converted into a motion picture theater with seats for 50 persons. Two projectors provide uninterrupted entertainment, and for the first night audience, the Chessie Theater presents Mark Hellinger's newest hit, Swell Guy. This is the last word in traveling luxury. Another step in the campaign to modernize American railroads. You don't have to miss that picture you wanted to see, nor your favorite star. Now you can see them underway on board the Theater on Rails. During recent blizzards in eastern Colorado, coyotes became a scourge to maroon livestock and poultry. They were killers. Something had to be done, and it was by air. Hunters take to the skies to stamp out the sharp-toothed menace. The 
The roar of the engine drives the coyotes out of their lairs, and the shadow of doom is etched across the snowbound wastes. Death for the marauder. In one month alone, over 200 were killed, and their hides sold. It takes a nice shooting eye and nice piloting. Flying at this altitude is not exactly healthy, especially for the coyote. He'll slaughter no more cattle or chickens, and his skin will bring a nice profit to hunters who take the aerial route. That's quite a bag for a day's work. You might even say the fur has been flying. of Angkor in Cambodia forms a landmark in Indochina as Marius Mute, French overseas minister, arrives to investigate the rebellion in Vietnam, which has cost hundreds of French and native lives during weeks of bitter fighting. After the military reception, General Jacques Leclerc, sent to take charge of military operations, greets Monsieur Mute at the residential palace. During the tour of investigation, the city of Laos is visited and the French minister is welcomed in the traditional manner by a gift of flowers, one from each of the populace. He will report to the French cabinet on his return to Paris. Monsieur Moutet also visits one of the famous Buddhist temples and inspects some of the ancient images. On his mission, he must determine the cause of the sudden attack on Hanoi, which the French have compared to Pearl Harbor. But despite strife in some portions, Monsieur Moutet finds culture and the hope of peace in France's colony. <laughs>